This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hi, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today I'm gonna to be showing you my premium uh, Gold Paladin GB8 Celtis Winter Turbo Zanzan Zan Cyclone deck, or whatever you wanna call it. So uh, the whole point of the deck is to go into uh, Celtis Winter as fast as possible, but also to abuse the immense power that vanillas get uh, throughout the whole game basically. So going right into the deck profile with our starter, it's going to be Crimson Lion, Cub Kirf, uh, just because, you know, we're running Ezel. So we want to have that Ezel superior right starter and also the plus one from its one route upon draw card is still really good. So this is going to be our starter for the deck. On to the grade threes. I'm running four copies of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel. So the first main skill is the main reason why we're running it. It's when it's in your hand and you have Bowman and Gareth on the board, you Soul Blast Kirf and you get to Superior Ride Blonde Ezel from your hand. The other skill doesn't really matter, but it's when it attacks, uh, call a card from your hand to Regret Circle. You're pretty much never going to use that. So the main reason we're running Blonde Ezel is because we want to get to Grade 3 as fast as possible because then that gives us access to get to our Grade 4s as fast as possible, thus turboing out the GB8. So, um, typically you want to be riding Barajan, but since it's searchable, you don't have to worry about that. Blonde Ezel is not searchable, so I'm running four copies. And it also allows you to play around some shenanigans where you can still ride a grade three while you're on a grade four, and then stride again on top of Blonde Ezel, thus increasing the GB count in your G zone, you know, going forward. So, Blonde Ezel is the best alternative for this deck as far as a grade three, so that's why I decided to run it. Next up for grade threes, the card from premium collection, Thunder Elemental Barajan, or Barigiran. <laughs> uh, the main skill is when it's placed, you Soul Blast one, and you look at the top seven cards of your deck for a vanilla, uh, and you add two of them to your hand. Um, the other skill is Act, if you have four or more vanillas, uh, on your field, in your rearguard circles, you can blast one, and you can stride uh, Cycloned from your G-Zone. So you just go straight into Cycloned if you have four vanillas, and you're probably going to have four vanillas if you get off Marwok's ability, so you're going to stride basically in the minute you hit grade two, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then the whole goal after that is if you can meet the requirements for Blonde Ezel, you can then ride on top of Cyclone. And then you can then use go into Spear Cross if you really want to have the Counter Blast for that play. And then that's how that's a one fast way to turbo out your G zone right from grade two. Um, but you, but sitting on top of Barajan just to go in the Cyclone is also just as good. Uh, only three copies because it is search searchable with Marwok. So that's fine. The other copies are mostly for discard costs for striding or for costs like Progenator Dragons and Xeroth Dragons. So next up, I'm just going to go right into the Vanillas. So we're running four copies of the Knight of Superior Skills Bowman Vanilla. So this is also just really convenient because, you know, Blonde Ezra requires Bowman and Gareth for its cost, and they're both, you know, Vanillas in their older form in their older formats. So this, you know, conveniently allows us to still make plays in premium. So Bowman is our Vanilla. Uh, it's a uh, flavor text <laughs> is... The one who is slashed by the by a master will perish without even realizing it. Interesting. So, uh, we're mostly running it just because we need vanillas to pay for costs. You need four more vanillas on the board to basically make most of our plays. Uh, and also having Bowman and Gareth on the board allows you to have access to Blonde Ezel's skill. So, for Bowman. The, the rare from BTO6. <laughs> Alright, next up. Four copies of Cloud and Elemental Mowark. So uh, Mohawk lets us uh, superior right into Barigian, or however it's pronounced, and thus let's go into Cyclone the turn we write it. So Van or Rear, uh, once per turn, if you have four or more cards that are Vanillas, uh, Counter Blast 1, search your deck for Barigian, write it as Stand, and then you also turned a Storm Element Cyclone face up after you do this. So the minute you use its skill to superior ride into this, you're already boop at GB1. And your vanillas immediately just got buffed because of Cyclone's passive, which I will get into. So you have four vanillas on your board. 
They all just got plus 5k because of Cyclone. You're on a grade 3. You just wrote a grade 3. You can now Soul Blast 1 because of its on right ability. Add two more Vanillas back to your hand. And then you can just kind of bless one to stride into Cyclone. So next question is, you're using all of these counter blasts right from your grade two turn. How are you going to do that? Well, obvious thing is, first of all, you need to get damaged. Uh, a smart player will not damage you the minute you hit grade two if they notice you're playing a vanilla deck. Um, so that's one thing to look out for. But if they do decide to give you damage, boom, you already got plays. You're striding as soon as you hit grade two. But the main thing is, how do you make even more plays with that one counter blast? Well, the answer is... Bum, ba, da, ba. Heat Element Bobo. This card is insanely good in this deck because its cost is its part of its cost is GB1, but the minute you get Mulwark off and you flip up a Cyclone, you're at GB1. So Bobo's skill is when it's placed from hand, if the number of cards in your G zone is three or less, you counter charge, soul charge, and then give yourself a damage, and you do perform a damage check, so you do get the triggers off of that. So, example, you pay the cost for Mallwark, uh, you superior ride and do all your stuff, you have four vanillas, you can call a Bobo, counter charge, soul charge, give yourself an extra damage, now you have two counter blasts to work with, and then you can counter blast, go into, you know, your uh, Cyclone. So, easy. So that's an easy way to make for cost, and you have an extra damage, which you can make use of for future plays. If you have a second Bobo, you can counter charge, boom, give yourself another damage. You can superior ride into Blonde Ezel, counter blast two, go into Spirit. There's there's tons of stuff that you can do. It's the creativity is unimaginable here <laughs> with what you can do. So, um, and then of course it's the Crayon Mental, so it fits the theme. Uh, but the main thing that that's why you're basically gonna be running Bobo. I chose three because I definitely want to see this thing the minute I hit grade two because I want to be able to pay the two counter blasts if my opponent only dealt me one damage. Uh, three has been pretty good for me. I keep seeing it enough in the play testing I've done. So, but if I did, if you really want to be spicy, you could probably drop a blonde Ezel, you know, for another Bobo if you want. But the three works fine just for me. So that was it for grade twos. Um, we're gonna get on to the grade ones now. So starting off with the card that completely broke the format. One copy of the restricted limited to one rain element Zarzan. So this card is when it's placed van or rear, you soul blast one, and you call up to two cards that are vanillas from your hand. If you called two, you can draw two, and then you turn up a cyclone face up from your G zone. So the minute you ride this, you're already at GB1, and you have two cards on your board that are at plus five. And you also just drew an additional two cards, so you didn't even loot minus anything. You're plusing because you're already at GB1, which is already great. And, like, you're turboing out the G zone faster, you're, five, you're already 5k ahead of your opponent in terms of power. The next turn, you're going to be 10k, and it's just going to be completely abusive. So... Uh, this card's still pr pretty stupidly overpowered, so you definitely want to be running this. Um, and, you know, that's all I can really say about Zanzan. So, definitely run this card in your, in your Cyclone deck. Alright, next up we're going into our Vanillas. So we got four copies of the Knight of Elegant Skills Gareth. Um, Vanilla. Uh, Vanilla, and it also triggers with Blonde Ezel's ability. It's also, you know, classic Gold Paladin 8K, so a lot of aesthetic going on here. Uh, next up for Vanillas, I'm running four copies of the one from the Premium Collection. So we got Light Element, Mikura, so it's got a 15K shield, uh, 8K base, which is really cool. So this is definitely a card that when you add it to your hand through Zanzan, if you draw it, or if you get it through uh, Barugian, um, having this in your hand for extra shield is always very helpful. And with Slamy Flare, uh, now we have a grade one with 15k shield, you know, to make up for the grade ones with 5k shield. But now if you call two cards of two grades, you can call this and trigger. That's 30 shield on top of the 15 from Slamy Flare, so it's a nice buff to the shield of the deck as well. All right, next up for grade ones, uh, this is how we get the loop. I am running three copies 
of Night of Resolution Bethok, and that's because I want to see it in my hand. This deck draws so many cards through the triple driving and the searching and basically filtering and pulling the triggers out of your deck, basically, from the Barajian searching back and forth. So this eventually will be in my hand. I run three copies just because I want to guarantee I see at least one. But as soon as I see this card in my hand, I know I'm ready to set up for the loop in the GB8 turn. And getting the GB8 is so easy with this deck. So this way, I just want to run three just so I can have more consistently, or just have more consistency, sorry, and see it in my hand. Bethuk skill is, uh, this unit gets abilities based on the number of units rear guards called this turn. So if you called two or more, it gets 5k. If you called four or more, this does not rest when it boosts. And if you guys watch the World Championships from 2019 with Gold Paladin Premium, that this is the card that basically helped uh, the Gold Paladin, the other Gold Paladin player win. So uh, this is basically the card that enables the loop and it's just really, really, really stupid funny. So definitely running Bethok in my Saltus Winter Loop deck. Lastly, three copies of Tempest Spear. I'm not gonna lie, three seems a little excessive. I would probably cut this down to two, but again, the goal of the deck is to GB8 turbo, and this card's whole purpose is to just turbo the G-Zone. So it's skill, it's an order, so you can only use one once per turn. You can't have lost one, turn any card in your G-Zone face up. Look at the top seven, reveal, uh, reveal up to two vanillas, and then you have them in your hand, you shuffle your deck. So you could already use this, you know, you can't have lost one, you're already flipping up uh, a Cyclone. You can, you know, use more work, skill, counter blast, and then you go into Belgian. Then you can call a Bobo, you counter charge, then you use another counter blast to go into your, your Cyclone. So there's a lot of things you can do to just completely go super aggro with the uh, counter blasting in this deck, thanks to Bobo, and also just Celtus Winter, Tur basically getting you to GB3 the turn you hit to grade two. And then from then on, getting to GB8 is just easy. So also, um, searching out vanilla is mean your heal triggers, which are running vanilla heal triggers, gives you access to your G Guardians way faster. G Guardians help you get to GB8, etc. cetera. So uh, Tempest Sphere is helpful, but for the most part, the card does get kind of clunky sometimes. That's just a personal experience of mine. So next up for triggers, uh, it's going to be the typical 844 being the 4 crit, or 8 crit, sorry. So, you know, vanilla crits with the V series, so we got our 8 crits. So I decided to do Fortune Bell because the art's so cute. Uh, Flame of Victory, you know, classic, classic crit right there. Uh, and then, you know, your vanilla... Heal Triggers, Elixir Sommelier. You're basically going to be searching this card all the time the minute you can see it, just to get access to your G-Guardians. And then, lastly, for triggers, you're doing your standard Halo Shield Mark Draw PGs, because draw triggers are good, PGs are good, draw PGs are great. So, standard trigger lineup still fits well with this deck, so we're not changing anything. So that was it for the main deck, getting onto the G-Zone. So obviously you're going to be running your four copies of Snow Element Cyclone. So Snow Element Cyclone skill is continuous van or G zone during your turn. Uh, if this card is face up, all of your vanillas get 5k. So this stacks. So if all four face up, all your vanillas get plus 20k during your turn. Stupid. <laughs> Other skill. When it's on the Vanguard circle, uh, when a normal unit without any abilities is drive checked, uh, you can stand one of your rear guards. So the minute you check a vanilla, a uh, normal unit vanilla, you just stand one of your already powered up vanilla cards that you just attacked and now you got another big old beat stick to attack with. So Cyclone's great, but the main goal is not to beat face with Cyclone, it's to get to GB8. So that's what we go and do. Next up, more of our turbo support. We got two copies of Golden Dragon Spear Cross Dragon. So G Zone, Unite. If your Vanguard is grade three, kind of blast two, discard a card from your hand, and stride this face up. So uh 
basically the main thing to do with this deck is there's plenty of ways to go about this. One of the things I like to do is um, I like to just ride into Belagen and then I can, you know, if I have the Counter Blast available, you can just use the Spear X, boom, Unite Stride while your opponent's on grade two. And then if you have a Mulwark on the rear guard circle, you can use its skill to go into another bar again and then call a Bobo, most likely. That's the only way you're going to get your counter charge back. And then Baragon skill, boom, you're on Cyclone, and now you're at GB3 right from the get-go. So that's one way I like to use um, Spear X. Uh, for the other part, it's still over overall a really great card for its other ability, which I will show in just a second. So other skill is Act, once per turn, Soul Blast 1, turn a G unit face up, Look at five cards from the top of your deck, call two of them to rear and shuffle your deck. So gives you board, which is always really good, especially in the Excel clan. And it, you know, flips anything face up. So you can go into this, you flip up a cyclone, so now your vanillas get more power, and you can use those other skill to fill your board with more vanillas. So can't go wrong with that. Definitely a really good card for this deck. Will Def 10 out of 10 recommend. Next up, Golden Dragon, Bram Bent Dragon, which is the card from Premium, premium I was going to say Previous Collection, Premium Collection 2020. Uh, this card I definitely overlooked a lot because I looked at it at first, and we'll read its skill, and then I'll tell you what I thought. So it's when it attacks, you choose two rear guards, put them on the bottom of your deck, turn G zone, G unit, G unit from your G zone face up. Next, draw two cards. Uh, and then you can call up to two cards from your hand to the rear guard circle. If you call two, it gets a crit. Overall, I was kind of seeing like, oh, I get what they're doing. They want to make all those gold paladin cards that are like, oh, when called from hand, do an effect like Sagamore, Vivian. Other cards that just um, get power and effects from being called by a card ability, Dindrain, Gareth, things like that. And I was like, eh, in premium, seems a little too slow, whatever. But... I wasn't really thinking about the fact that it's called up to two cards and it just lets you draw two cards. So the whole point of this card is not only does it skill let you flip up a card from your G zone, aka, you know, Cyclone, but you can just go into this, swing, pick two of your rear guards, uh, if they're like cards like Bobo or Morwark that are vanillas or whatever, or non vanillas that you want to have back in the deck, or if they're just, you know, triggers that you called just to meet the requirement for abilities, like just to have vanillas on the board, you can put those triggers back in your deck, draw two cards, and then just not call anything. And then use your hand just got more filled, and you can kind of stall out till you get to the GB8 if you need to do that. So this card, I feel like, can make a lot of really helpful plays defensively, and also gets getting triggers back into your deck from the field that you called you know, just to meet those uh, four vanilla requirements, definitely gonna be helpful. So recycling triggers, really good. Definitely don't need more than one of it because you're most likely gonna be in GB8 pretty soon. So the one copy should be just fine. But this card, definitely overlooked it. And I definitely think if you're gonna be playing this deck, you should try it out. Next up, uh, the basically the focus of this whole deck, which is Golden Knight of Lynx, Celtus Winner. So this is the card you're going to go into to win the game. It used to be Ultima. It can still be Ultima, but you go into this and you basically just win. So the whole goal is to get your GB8, have Bethok in your hand, set up a board, and you win. That's it. <laughs> so Saltus Winner's skill is uh, Unite GB8. So you have to have called at least two things that turn. When this attacks... You pick four of your rear guards and they get a red text auto ability, which is at the end of the battle this unit attacks or boosts, you look at the top two cards, call one from among the two, uh, the other goes to the bottom of your deck, and the called unit gets 5k uh, for, the, for, that, for that turn. So basically for the battle because you're going to be calling on top of things. So this loop triggers because it's whenever a unit attack or boosts, you give the ability to Bethok. Bethok does not rest when it boosts, meaning every time that this column swings, this triggers. You call a new card from the deck. This triggers. 
you call a new card from the deck. You, you just keep going until you run out of deck. So that's literally a loop that you can do with this deck. The faster you do it, the more deck you have to work with. And then the other best part about this is when you swing with this and you get your triple drive, you give all the power to Bethok. So that way not you don't have just a 10k booster, you have a 20 or 30, maybe 40 if you get three triggers, 40k booster that will basically almost always guarantee to hit above whatever your opponent's Vanguard's power is going to be, damage triggers or not. So on top of the fact that the called unit gets 5k, every trigger you called is going to get plus 20k because you flipped up all your Cyclones. So the power that your opponent's going to have to deal with from every single one of these attacks, depending on what your called unit is, it's going to be stupid. And your opponent's going to sit there and go, what the f I can't guard anything. I literally have to take all of these attacks. And you're sitting there, yeah, GB8 Turbo. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how you win with this deck. The whole goal is to aggro out the GBs with all your elemental support and then use your G Guardians uh, as much as possible and then win. So now we'll just go into the, the, the knick-knack paddywhack stuff of the G-Zone. So one copy of Total Purity Agnos. This is basically just to set up. Like if your hand is really, really bricky and you really just need a way to throw your board down and draw some cards and then have free stride for the rest of the game, Agnos is pretty good. So one example of this would be if you are on Margen or whatever, Barjan, whatever his name is, you have like two cards in your hand or whatever somehow, and you can pay the cost for the Progeny or Stride. From among them, for the cost, you have Morwark and hopefully something that countercharges like a Bobo, you know? So now, hopefully maybe you call the rest of your Vanillas or... You know, you draw some cards, and among them are vanillas. You call some vanillas. Let's just let's just say you meet the requirements for this, right? This is all this is all just situational. So, you got Agnos off. You have Mo work. You have your four random, you know, GB things, right? Or your vanilla things. My bad. Now, you can go ahead and use Mo work's ability. You just. Boop. Ride on top of the, of the Agnos, because Agnos's job is done. It already did what it was supposed to do, right? If you have more Counterblast, you can then Counterblast one and just go straight into your Cyclone. You know, in the meantime that you did all of this, you just flipped up more GBs because you know more work flips up. Uh, you know, Barjan gives you Cyclone right when you stride, so you just have a board now. On top of that, your board is now buffed, and you made all that up because you were able to go into Agnos. So, just a small example play you can do with Agnos, but for the most part, it really is just there for, like, catching up. And also free stride. Who doesn't love free stride, you know? All right, and then where is the other card? Where'd you go, buddy? There you are. The other OP card, Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. So this is basically, if your opponent's at three damage, you have a board, you have Excel Circles because of Blondezzle, you're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna win now instead of waiting till GB8. Like I already, you know, did Zanzan, I flipped up a G unit. I already did Molwark. I already went into my bar gen turn, so now, I already got three face-up G units. I don't even need to G guard this game. Like, I'm just going to go into Ultima and just crit you to death. So Ultima's skill is Cannablast 2. When this is placed, you search for four cards. Uh, call two of them. The other two get put on top of your deck, a.k.a. your triggers, your double crits. And then for the rest of the turn, uh, whenever this reveals a, a trigger, uh, the trigger effects are applied to all of your units. So now all those already buffed vanillas now get an extra 10k and a crit. And since you're going to get two crits, everything's going to be swinging with three crit. So your opponent has to guard everything, meaning it puts them in a tough position. They either lose that turn 
or you know you lose anyways because you don't have GBs and your deck's shut down because Ultima's other ability is when this goes back to the G zone, you remove your whole entire G zone from play. So you, you don't have GBs and your deck shut, just completely shuts down. So don't go into Ultima unless you know for a fact you will win. But you don't really need to worry about that because Celtus Winner is your go-to for how to, you know, you know, win. <laughs> uh, other thing I did mention about Agnos is if you don't know what Agnos does, I'll just say it's skill real quick. When it's placed, Counterblast, Soul Blast, uh, you call as many cards from your hand as possible. That doesn't mean call until your board is full. I know we've made that mistake before in the past, but that means is if you have five available real guard circles and you have seven cards in your hand, you have to call, 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 call on top of something until your hand is empty, basically. You need to call from your hand as much as possible. So... That's one thing to note about Agnos' skill. So basically you use it when you have like three cards in hand. After, and then it's after you call as much as possible, you draw three cards from your deck. Uh, and then when this is face up in the G zone, uh, you can pay the cost for stride without having to pay a cost. So you just declare stride and you just do it for free. And it also cannot be flipped by card ability. So you can't just, you know, boop, I have free stride, so. Agnos is definitely there for the tech mostly. I haven't really used it in many of my playtesting, but I can see myself using it in certain scenarios where I do need to free stride. And if my hand's pretty bricky, like if I just have Tempest Spheres and nothing really to work with, Agnos is definitely going to be a good choice. All right, on to the G Guardians. Two copies of True Liberator of Healing Elise. Uh, two because it's a G Guard flipper. We're trying to get to GB8, so definitely want to be running multiples of this. So what it does is GB1, uh, one placed, counter blast one, flip a G guardian, uh, yeah, choose a G, I'm pretty sure it just says G, yeah, it's G guardian. So choose a G guardian, turn it face up, and then you look at the top two cards from your deck, you call one, the other goes to the bottom of the deck, and if the guard is successful, the called unit gets moved to a rear guard circle. Main purpose of this card, is to flip up your G Guardians and get to GB8. So that's why we're running two of it. The other card we're running is our buffed Golden Bee Slamy Flare. So Slamy Flare's skill is you choose one of your rear guards, put it back in the bottom of your deck, so recycling triggers. You look at a top five, you choose two units of different grades and you call them to the Guardian Circle. So AKA you have your 15K trigger and your 15K Merka. So that's already a really big shield. And then at the end of the battle, you know, this goes back to G-Zone and the called cards go to the drop zone. So this is just a really big, big boy shield. This turbos out our GBs. And then I just have one copy of Dismal. Dismal is mostly a flip target, but it's also there uh, if your opponent, if you have Bethlock already on the board and you're like, oh, my opponent is going to do something to target or retire it, you can just go into Dismal. Just if you're just trying to G-Guard, just get your G-Units face up. Dismal just protects one of your rear guards from being hit. Um, so that's helpful as well. So Dismal's skill basically is when it's placed on the Guardian Circle, you choose one of your rear guards and that unit cannot be attacked nor targeted by card, not be chosen by card effects um, by your opponent's cards. So it means you can pick a front row rear guard, Dismal it, and then your opponent cannot attack it, meaning they can't damage deny you if they want to do that. So that's also really helpful. That way, you know, you want to get those counter blasts to pay for card abilities. So Dismal, I feel like, is the good choice here. But you'll probably most likely use it. It's a flip target. Uh, that's basically it. That was the entire deck. So uh, I already explained to you guys the combo. You just go and do your Celtus Winner. You have to go into your, if I can find it, doop -doo, your Bethok. And then call a bunch of things, uh, give them, have Celtus Winter attack, give four rear guards the ability, especially Bethok, and then you just, you just loop, 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 Bethok, loop. So, and then that's how you win. So, hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. If you have any questions, just let me know. Any comments, concerns, just leave them in the comment section below. So, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. 
and I will see you all in the next video.